Hello and welcome to another episode of True Crime Stories, where we explore the most shocking and baffling cases from around the world. We delved into the tragic and mysterious case of Wilma Andersson, a 17-year-old girl who went missing in Sweden in 2019. Her disappearance sparked a massive search operation that involved hundreds of volunteers, police officers, and dogs. But what they found was beyond their worst nightmares. What really happened to her on that fateful day? Join me as we delve deeper into the case of the most horrific and puzzling crimes in Swedish history. Before we get into this case, I want to warn you that this is a very disturbing and graphic story. So viewers' discretion is strongly advised. Uddevalla is a town and the seat of Uddevalla municipality in Vastra Gotaland County, Sweden. It has a population of about 35,000 people, and it is located at a bay of the southeastern part of Skagerrak, which is a strait between Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Uddevalla is also known for its beautiful beaches that are filled with seashells, and it has one of the largest shell banks in the world. Uddevalla has a museum that showcases the history and culture of the region, as well as a nature reserve that offers scenic views and hiking trails. Uddevalla is a charming and lively town that has a lot to offer to visitors and locals alike. In this town we meet Wilma Andersson, a vibrant and beautiful 17-year-old girl who was full of life. Her mother, Linda, describes her as a creative and strong-minded girl who loved nothing more than spending time with her friends and taking photos for her social media. Wilma was always up for a good time and never missed an opportunity to capture a moment. At the age of 15, Wilma met Tishko Ahmed Shabazz, a 20-year-old who was born in Iraq but had been living in Sweden since he was eight years old. Despite the age difference, Tishko was smitten with Wilma and the feeling was mutual. The age of consent in Sweden is 15, so there was no legal issue with their relationship. Tishko had a tough time growing up and was bullied in school, but as he got older, he became more headstrong and refused to back down to anyone. Wilma, on the other hand, had her own family troubles and was not able to live with her father. She lived with her sister Emily, her mother Linda, and her father Marcus, who had divorced. Linda was not thrilled about her daughter dating a 20-year-old, but she trusted Wilma and hoped for the best. Things started off great when Wilma and Tishko found a place of their own in Sweden, but soon Tishko became controlling in the relationship. Even Linda noticed a change in Wilma's behavior. Despite the challenges, Wilma and Tishko stayed together for two years. Wilma often confided in her sister Emily about their relationship, and it was clear that she was struggling. On November 14, 2019, Wilma confided in her sister Emily about her desire to end things with her controlling and abusive partner, Tishko. She was tired of being told what to wear, where to go, and who to speak to. Later that day, Tishko returned home from work and Wilma made the decision to leave him. Emily tried to reach out to Wilma later, but she didn't answer the phone. By November 15th, Wilma had missed a dentist appointment, and by the 17th her worried parents went to Tishko's apartment to find out where she was. After some persistent knocking, Tishko finally answered the door, looking slightly high and not in the mood to talk. But Wilma's parents weren't leaving without answers. They asked Tishko where their daughter was, and he reluctantly admitted that she had left him and taken all of her belongings. He didn't know where she had gone, but he didn't expect to hear from her anytime soon. As they all sat down to talk, Tishko explained that he had come home from work on the 14th and they had a massive argument that led to Wilma walking out of their relationship. It was a heartbreaking situation, but Wilma's family was relieved to finally have some answers. Wilma's parents weren't too concerned at first as her relationship with Tishko was always on and off. However, this time was different. 
Tishko's behavior towards Wilma had been concerning, and when Emily couldn't get a hold of her sister, panic set in. Emily took to Facebook, pleading for anyone who had seen her sister to come forward. Wilma had been missing since Thursday, and no one had been able to reach her. Friends and family were worried sick. Emily described her sister as 165 centimeters tall with dark hair and blonde highlights, but no one knew what she was wearing when she disappeared. This was completely out of character for Wilma, who always kept in touch with her loved ones. The police were called and a search party was formed. Friends and family joined in, and even police dogs were brought in to help. The police used drones to search areas that were difficult to reach. Tishko was questioned, but he claimed to know nothing. Three days into the search, there was still no sign of Wilma. She was usually active on social media, but even that had gone silent. The situation was dire and Emily begged anyone with information to come forward. The search continued and the community rallied together in the hopes of finding Wilma safe and sound. Over 5,000 people have joined the search for Wilma, showing the incredible power of community when it comes to finding a missing person. The police have been working tirelessly on the case and have returned to speak to Tishko, Wilma's boyfriend. Despite their questioning, Tishko insists that he has not seen or heard from Wilma and has no idea where she could be. However, suspicions are rising about Tishko's behavior as it seems he was incredibly controlling of Wilma. Her family has reported that she changed drastically after meeting him, becoming withdrawn and unhappy. Even though she confided in her sister about Tishko's violent behavior, Wilma still loved him deeply. It has now been revealed that Tishko put a GPS device on Wilma's phone, allowing him to track her every move. In text messages released to the press, Tishko's controlling behavior is clear to see. The police are now investigating Tishko's movements on the day of Wilma's disappearance and have found CCTV footage of him in a supermarket. Neighbors have reported hearing a loud and aggressive argument between the couple, which was louder than usual. One neighbor even went to check on them, concerned for their safety. As they approached the apartment door, the tension in the air was palpable. But suddenly, everything stopped. The arguing ceased and an eerie silence descended upon the hallway. Even the neighbor felt uneasy. However, it turned out that the couple had simply retreated to their own apartment. The police were tracing Tishko's movements they contacted his workplace and asked for the company car he used to visit his clients' homes. The GPS in the car revealed that Tishko had been using it from November 14 to November 18, 2019. One of the locations he visited was a remote forest. The GPS data also showed that he had returned to his flat at 6 p.m. on November 14, the same day that Wilma disappeared. The investigation also found out that he had called on his clients, but had also returned to his own home numerous times throughout the day. On the day of the argument, Tishko had left his apartment around 6.30 p.m. He was later seen walking along the freeway, looking distant and wearing all black. The police picked him up and asked why he was walking along the freeway. Tishko explained that he was going to catch a train, but decided to walk home instead. The police took note of this, but didn't write an official report as they had no record of it ever happening. Tishko was eventually arrested on November 19, 2019. He had scratches on his forearms and the police found Wilma's bag and coat still hanging up in his apartment. Linda later stated that her daughter wouldn't go anywhere without her bag. It was a big turnaround when the police finally received a tip from one of Tishko's friend who said to had seen bloodstains in his flat. Forensics got to work with Blue Star in the apartment. This is the same as Luminol, only supposed to be a better version of it and more effective. They found bloodstains all over the wall and a large area on the floor in the living room. The investigation was heating up and the pieces of the puzzle were slowly coming together. As they entered the apartment, 
the detectives knew they were in for a gruesome search, armed with cans of Blue Star. They combed through every room, finding blood stains and splatters everywhere. But it was the trail of blood leading from the living room to the bedroom that caught their attention. Clearly, something had been dragged through the apartment, leaving a grisly path in its wake. The bed was a particularly disturbing find. Lit up by the blue star, it revealed the shape of a torso imprinted on the sheets. And when they discovered muscle tissue on a kitchen knife and on the wall in the living room, they knew they were dealing with something truly horrific. The amount of blood in the apartment made it clear that whoever had suffered these injuries was unlikely to have survived. And when they found Tishko's bedding in the trash outside, covered in bloodstains, they knew they had to bring him in for questioning. But Tishko denied any involvement, insisting that he would have known if there had been a large amount of blood in his apartment at any time. Meanwhile, the search for Wilma continued outside, with more and more people joining in every day. But it wasn't until nine days after Wilma had last been seen that the cadaver dogs were brought in. And as they entered the bedroom, they immediately indicated that a deceased person had been in the area. The smell was overwhelming, and the police knew they had to keep searching. Despite having already combed through the apartment, the police continued to look in the bedroom where the dogs had marked the area. As the officer approached the wardrobe, their heart was pounding with anticipation. Inside, they spotted a small travel case that had been there the whole time, just like many other items in the bedroom. The officers were surprised that this hadn't been checked before. They carefully took the case out of the wardrobe and opened it up. What they found inside was shocking. Wrapped in aluminum kitchen foil was a large object, and there were bloodstains all over the case. The officers knew they had to send it to the Gothenburg Forensic Labs for testing. When the case was opened up at the Gothenburg Forensic Labs, the officers were horrified to discover that Wilma had been decapitated and her severed head was wrapped in foil and tape. On closer inspection, they found Tishko's fingerprints on the foil and tape, as well as a footprint found with Wilma's blood at the crime scene where the rubbish bags were located. The pathologist couldn't provide a cause of death for Wilma, but it was clear that she had suffered blunt force trauma to the head and eye, and further injuries were caused by the decapitation. Wilma's family was informed of what had happened to their daughter, and they were devastated. Linda joined the search party, but they were no longer searching for a missing person. They were now searching for the rest of Wilma's body. From the evidence at the apartment, it was believed that the murder had taken place in the living room, while Wilma was either sitting on the floor or lying down. She would have been struck with such force to her head that muscle tissue was found on the wall. Her body was then dragged out of the living room into the hallway, and it's believed that she was then taken into the bathroom. It's unknown if she was dismembered in that room, but her body was eventually taken from the bathroom through the hall and into the bedroom where she was placed on the bed. The details of Wilma's murder were gruesome, and her family had to endure the pain of knowing what had happened to her. The police were determined to find the person responsible for this heinous crime and bring them to justice. Wilma's body has never been found, leaving her family and friends devastated and searching for answers. During the court hearing, Tishko showed no remorse for his actions, even when begged by Wilma's family to reveal where he had put her body. He callously looked at them with cold eyes and even stuck his finger up at them. Despite the horrific nature of the crime, the pathologist's report found Tishko to be perfectly sane at the time of the murder and during the trial, on July 27, Tishko Ahmed stood before the judge and was found guilty of both the murder of Wilma and desecrating her corpse. He was sentenced to life in prison, with the possibility of parole after 10 years. However, Tishko has always maintained his innocence and later appealed his conviction. The Court of Appeal reduced his sentence to 18 years, citing the lack of evidence due to Wilma's body never being found and still missing to this day. 
The tragedy of her death and the pain inflicted upon her loved ones will never be forgotten. What do you think about this heartbreaking story? Please let us know in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.